I'm going to talk to you about a really important topic, and that is colonial slavery. What do we mean by that? This is the time period before the American Revolution, so um, before 1783. Um, slavery will continue after the American Revolution, actually all the way until 1865. So later in this course, we'll talk about um, slavery during antebellum times in the early 1800s. But for now, let's just talk about slavery before the American Revolution, in other words, during colonial times. I've narrowed it down to six key facts you need to know. The first one being, when does this story start? Um, we're going to start it in 1619, because that is when the first African slaves landed in Jamestown, Virginia. Uh, here you can see a painting showing that um, some Portuguese captured some African slaves and brought them to um, the British colonies where they were sold off. Unfortunately, this was not the first time that slavery ever existed. It had been going on for a long time, but this was the first time that African slaves um, had arrived in the British colonies. Number two, um, once slavery gets here, it's still, it doesn't happen overnight as far as how the system of slavery is going to be executed. Um, it starts actually with indentured servitude. Indentured servants um, were a huge makeup of the colonial population. Uh, if you keep in mind, it's very expensive and risky to venture over to the New World from Europe. Um, so many of the people that are going to move to America are poor. How are they going to be able to afford this journey? They're actually going to come here as indentured servants. Um, and they are going to get their boat ride paid for. And in exchange, they're going to work for that person who paid for their voyage um, for five to seven years for no pay. Um, they'd get room and board, um, but then they would work off their debt and eventually be free. Some historians estimate that about up to two thirds of all immigrants in colonial times came over as indentured servants. So again, these indentured servants were typically um, single um, young males um, that were coming over here in big numbers. As you can imagine, working for someone for no pay for that long got old. And so the pool of indentured servants dries up. Um, many indentured servants ran away or tried to break their contract. Um, and actually, here you can see on the left is an advertisement um, for an indentured servant, a blacksmith in particular. And on the right, you can see this is an actual indenture or contract spelling out the exact parameters for this um, person's servitude. So as I mentioned, over time, there's less and less indentured servants. Many of them had run off. And so America slowly turns to a race-based system of slavery. Um, and so they turn to African slaves, um, like some other European countries had been doing at this time, and unfortunately just deemed um, the African um, race as being inferior and began subjugating them accordingly. So again, this was a slow process that it's... Um, started as indentured servants, which were volunteers, right, that came over to America to work for no pay, um, but gradually then evolved into a forced um, system that was based on race. And the laws actually show this evolution of slavery as well. Remember, all, all of these um, notions of what it meant to be a slave um, had to be articulated. Um, and again, this didn't happen overnight. So anything in red, remember, is going to be a Quizlet term. So definitely make sure you know it. The Virginia slave laws, for instance, spelled out that um, children of slaves would also be slaves. That was not something that was automatic until the colonies started passing their respective laws. And you can see in other colonies, um, you know, it was a deliberate practice to start saying that, hey, you're going to be a slave for um, life. Um, or that certain colonies didn't allow um, whites and blacks to marry. Um, again, this is a gradual process embedding slavery into um, American society. Number three, also keep in mind that slavery existed in the North as well. I think we tend to think of slavery just being in the South, but in the colonial times, there was even slaves in the North. And this map shows you um, as a percentage of the um, population there, you can see um, that there was still slaves in the North as well. It's not until after the American Revolution that the Northern colonies, at that point, the Northern states begin to abolish slavery. The fourth fact we should know is that when we're talking about colonial times, um, we are talking about slaves being used to grow tobacco primarily. That was the main crop, cash crop at this time. So there you can see a painting of some slaves um, on a tobacco plantation, or there's a, a photograph of what tobacco looked like being grown in um, Virginia. 
So if you're ever writing a short answer or an essay on colonial slavery, do not mention cotton. Cotton was not a cash crop at this point because they had not figured out a way to mass produce it. So that's not going to happen until later um, when Eli Whitney invents the, uh, the cotton gin. So in colonial times, though, we're talking about slaves being used to grow tobacco. The fifth thing we need to understand is about the triangular trade route. This is how um, the slaves got to America. There were many different triangular trade routes, as this map shows you, um, including sending things to Europe and going between Africa and America. Um, the one that we're going to focus on is this one um, because it entails the Middle Passage. Um, the Middle Passage was the journey for African slaves from Africa to uh, America, um, it, and it was a horrible, horrible um, voyage for those slaves. Um, the Middle Passage is not one of your Quizlet terms, but triangular trade is, but you could definitely use Middle Passage um, if you were ever writing an essay or a short answer question. Um, it would be a specific piece of evidence that you could use. But before we talk about the Middle Passage, just understand that the plight of slaves um, started even before they got on the boat. They were captured. Um, a lot of times inland Africa forced to march hundreds of miles. Or we don't even know how many millions of Africans just died on that um, journey alone. They'd be branded like the picture on the right shows. So they're, again, um, taking away all humanity. They're no longer called by their African names, but have now been branded. Um, this is actually some photos of when I visited one of the largest slave prisons in Ghana. Um, you can see kind of an overview at the top. The bottom left is where they were um, enchained, um, and even you know, 400 years later, as I was there, you could still smell um, the urine, and just it, you could tell how awful the conditions were even 400 years ago. And then on the right is the door of no return, where the slaves would go out and then get on a boat, where they'd be taken to the new world and never to see their homeland again. When they're on that middle passage, on that boat ride from Africa to America, they'd be stacked like this image portrays in the top right. Um, or that diagram kind of shows. All of those um, are people that are stacked all along. Um, the journey would last anywhere from six to eight weeks. Um, and uh, they estimate that about 10 to 20% of Africans died on this Middle Passage journey. Altogether, about 12 million Africans were taken from Africa and brought to um, the Americas. Um, sometimes it was actually more beneficial to throw the slaves overboard alive because there were insurance policies that protected them. So um, there was a lot of death along the Middle Passage and a lot of pain and suffering. Um, you might wonder why didn't slaves rebel? There are hundreds of examples of slave rebellions. We're just going to ask that you remember the biggest one during colonial times, that is, and that's the Stono Rebellion. This occurred um, along the Stono River um, outside of Charleston, South Carolina. Um, again, this is not the largest slave rebellion ever. It's the largest one during colonial times in the British colonies. Um, some slaves went to uh, a store and killed the two store owners and took the weapons from the store and then kind of marched and gathered some more slaves and um, continued killing um, whites along the way. They were hoping to get to Florida. You can see it on the map because there was um, rumors that they could be free in um, Florida, which was held by the Spanish at this time. Um, as this uh, primary source notes, um, it describes how many Negroes joined um, the, the calling. Um, but this is written from a planter's perspective. So you can see that the last sentence there, it does say that, you know, the planters were able to put down this rebellion eventually, but not without a toll. Um, about 20 whites were killed along this, um, in this rebellion, um, and about twice as many slaves were killed. And in the aftermath of the Stono Rebellion, like what we're going to see happen with many slave rebellions, um, they were crushed just by the uh, magnitude of the whites' force, and the slaves were suppressed um, even more so um, in the aftermath as they made even stricter slave codes and so forth. 